This is the Mistress of the Iron Maid, and this is Bethany Bled. Bethany Bled is one of the many sideshow freaks that we've been looking at over the course of these last couple of reviews. This is from the Clive Barker's The Infernal Parade Series 1 figure line. Let's go ahead and take the tape measure and put it right to the very top of the Iron Maiden. There we go. That's about right. Right there. The figure stands, technically counting all the stuff that you're seeing right here, 10.6 inches in height. If you are somebody that follows centimeters instead as your preferred measure uh, unit of measurement, then 27.1 centimeters is Bethany Bled. Now, Bethany Blood was a little bit more of an involved figure to put together. There's like a lot of intricacies that involves when you get her out of packaging. So we'll kind of start with the final piece and then we'll kind of dismantle it as best we can to reveal the figure inside. Of course, right on the top, well, right at the top of this review, we'll start with the the cart in which the character stands atop of. Here we have the prisoner, Bethany Bled, standing on top of this wooden uh, this wooden cart. Now with the cart there is still the hitch on the one side in the loop in which you can attach it to the other figures that we've looked at thus far with now one figure left and then we're going to have a look in the entire lineup. Um, to its credit I do think that the the carts themselves do look quite good. They look like they are real wood and you can see that the boarding is right there. Still it's a bit of a nightmare to have to install the, the wheels and I know I know I sound like a broken record for saying that, but if you wanted to look at each of these videos as their own standalone videos, I do have to stress that adding the wheels can be a pain in the butt. It's not so much the back wheels, these larger wheels, not, not at all the issue. It's these front wheels. I can't quite get them in place properly, often at times leaving a big noticeable gap in which the tires are sitting on. I just can't push them on well enough. And I've already done it a couple of times when I did the uh, Tom Requiem that I put the tire on too, I put the wheel on too hard that I bent the wheel a little bit. It's still okay, but uh, these aren't the easiest things to put in place. At the credit though, to the wheels, they do spin and that's exactly what they should do. And you can see that you can actually spin these back and forth or you not spin them, but you can move them back and forth. But that's exactly what I'm mentioning earlier. Yeah, you know, the tires pop off way too frequently. I would almost even take like a, like a screwdriver or a, little, a very small blade and see if I could burrow out a larger hole in the tires just so they can do have an easier job of fitting over the the, uh, the the rod, the metal rod that fits through there. Okay, so tires aside, wheels aside, you know, we can't just keep talking about that over every single review, but it again, it's a, it's a problem. It's something that is just a pain in the butt to have to deal with, and I've now already done it, what, five times now? Still got one more as we have a look at the Dr. Fetter's family of freaks. Anyways, let's not talk about that anymore. I don't want to talk about that any more than I have to. Uh, there, like I said, there was a fair bit of assembly that's required when you get this figure out of, statu out of the packaging. I slipped by saying statue. That's pretty much what this is. I mean, most, if not all, the McFarland stuff is generally relegated to being statues than anything else, but it's a neat looking statue. Deep inside the Iron Maiden there, you can see there is Bethany Bled. Um, we'll take her out, but I just want to kind of show you the the Maiden in, itself in which she is enc encased inside of. You can see that there are all these little spikes. Each of the spikes are softer plastic, so they're not going to break on you. And then there's these slots in which you have to add these swords. Before I talk a little bit about that, one thing, if you do buy this for yourself, 
this is a this is an older figure so I have to say that you would have to go online to buy it um, in the bottom of the packaging I'm gonna just hold it on this one side the bottom of the packaging there was a little small baggie and in the bag were these little padlocks three of them to be exact and they just fit over top of these loops you can take off the locks like that oops take off this one and we'll take off this one hopefully not drop it in the process and you could in theory bring this closed and close it shut the latch doesn't really fit over itself the swords might actually be a bit in the in the way of allowing you to close it completely but I guess in theory you could close it and then put the padlocks over top of it one thing I did notice though when I got it out is that there is a peg right here that attaches the hanging bracket or the hinge of the door. Uh, it keeps it attached. This bottom one was broken. This one was missing altogether. So it's not the most secure. Actually, you can see it right there. It, it's broken right off. It's not a deal breaker because I can still hinge the door over top of it. Let me just show you what's happened here. There's the broken peg. And there's the one that's broken right off. I can still sit the door over top of the bottom one, like that, and then I can just hinge it over top. So it's still it's still workable. It's just a shame that when I got it out, it was broken, broken there and broken there. Then we can go ahead and take these swords out. So I'm just gonna put this down for a second, making sure, of course, I don't lose the padlocks. And I'm gonna very carefully slide the swords out. The swords are made up of a thinner plastic, so you, of course, I'm sure I don't have to tell you, but I'll tell you anyways that the plastic, just be careful, you know, you know when you're slotting it through, let me just lift it up again so you can see it, there's a, there's a hole right there, and it's a tight fit to slide the sword in place. The harder sword to put in place was this one here, so I'll just put, the, put it down for a second so I can slide it out. There we go, there's one of them. And we'll go ahead and slide out the other one. With those out of the way, let's open up. There we go. There's one side. There's one side. And there you've got Bethany Bled inside the Iron Maiden. The Iron Maiden looks really good, both front and back. This is not an area where you would normally see it. There she falls. This isn't a side you would normally see, but you can see that McFarlane did finish the back side. That's a nice touch. The wood grain looks fairly realistic for it to be a plastic accessory, essentially. And of course, you've got the metal framework here with all the rivets. Nice old world look to it. I like that quite a bit. And then inside, you've got a flooring of spikes and you've got some spikes along the back wall here. Spikes also on the side. And again, if we now have that out of the way, you can completely close it. And let's just close that up. Slot that in place. I'm just going to put it down here for a second. Slot that in. It might be a little harder to do because she's not in there now. And then you should be able to put the padlock in place. Just there's not a whole lot of it's not a whole lot of wiggle room to actually get that in place, but it should in theory fit into place. And you would just use the padlocks. Now talking a little bit about something else that's broken on the figure. The wheel has popped off. I'll talk, I'll deal with that later. Getting Bethany bled out of packaging, I did notice that she had a peg on the back of her back here. This peg is supposed to attach, open this up again. It's supposed to be a peg that's right there. She, in theory, doesn't, I don't think she's supposed to be removed. Um, or at the very least, if you were to remove her, the peg obviously should stay right there. It shouldn't stay in her back. And then there is a hole, very gruesome looking hole, in the bottom of her foot. And then the foot sits right over top of the blade, or one of the spikes. As you can see, it sticks right through her foot. And that's how the figure is supposed to be. Despite for the fact that even though the peg is broken, the, the layout of the, the spikes on either side of her sort of do a makeshift job of holding her in place. So again, if you pop her back down onto that spike, the spikes on the sides of the back sort of kind of keep the figure from moving around on you. It's just a shame that getting it out, she had that broken 
that broken spike or peg in the back of her. So I'll just put that down right there. I know I haven't forgotten about the tire, it's, it's still there. And let's have a look at the figure itself. Obviously now that she's out of packaging, it's a little easier. And now that she's, of course, out of the Iron Maiden, it's a little bit easier. She's a pretty looking figure. Sort of got a seductive looking pose. She's obviously very bare minimally dressed here. There's very little clothing on her. But she's a pretty looking figure. She looks like somebody. I can't quite place who exactly she looks like. So if anybody has any ideas, let me know down below. She looks like an actress, but I just can't can't quite place can't quite place who it is. Very skimpy lingerie, certainly on the back there as well. She's a pale looking figure. I guess we can talk a little bit about her posability now, now that I've got her out of the uh, the Iron Maiden. Her head rotates. Um, her arm technically swivels out. It obviously will look a little weird by having this now noticeable cut there. So it's one of those things. Posability is there, but what, really, what are you going to do with it? Same with this one right here. What are you going to do with having her arm sticking out like this? I guess you could have it as if she's hinging the door open on the one side. But again, it just makes sense that the arm is going to be like this, resting against her elbow. Um, the legs also swivel. And, uh, and that's it. She's more so a showpiece. I'm using the quotes, showpiece, than she is anything else. So again, you just want to resume by putting her back in place, just pegging her in place. And unfortunately, being that I did get her in a broken state, I can't, um, I can't deny, or I can't certainly confirm that she is supposed to come out of it. The fact that she is finished on the backside as well, no pun intended, leads me to believe that you could have unpegged her. It also leads me to believe that because why would she have a hole allowing her to sit deliberately on a spike if you couldn't take the figure out? Most if not all the time I'm going to be displaying her. I'm probably going to be displaying her like this. I never have a reason to really take her out of the Maiden. So there, for that reason, I'm just going to likely leave her in there. So for what she little does in the way of posability, it obviously makes sense that I'm not going to worry about moving too much on her. Uh, what's an interesting little detail just before wrapping up this review is she's got this little indentation in the side of her shoulder. Now, I don't know if that's supposed to be there. I'm thinking Amy Smart. Amy Smart. Anybody? Let me know. Amy Smart, just black hair. But I don't know if that indentation is supposed to be there because it is actually coming from the spike. None of the spikes look like they make impact, although you can see there are a little few little indentations there in her skin. Speaking of also indentations, there's an indentation there with her hand, which I find actually funny that they had to put an indentation of where her hand is supposed to rest. But either way, it's a neat looking figure. I mean, really all of the Infernal Parade figures have been neat looking figures. Disastrous to put together in some cases. This one actually wasn't to so bad to put together, although I still had the problem with the blasted wheels popping off. That aside though, I like the look here though of Bethany Bled. And a comment gets yelled out from the crowd. So she isn't posable? <laughs> you must be new. No, no, sadly, she isn't posable. But really, none of the Infernal Parade figures are posable. Whatever teases you get, whether it be a swivel in an elbow or a swivel in a head, that's all you're really going to be getting. In the case here of Bethany Bled, sure, she can move her arms, but why would I move them? She's intended to look a certain way. This is the look that McFarlane had in mind. So changing her anything other than that doesn't really improve the figure. It just ends up making the figure look like her arm's been cut off and glued back into place. Speaking of broken off and glued back into place, it's a shame that the figure arrived out of packaging in a broken state. That peg on the back of her torso is something I'm probably just going to have to glue in place and call it a day. I like that at the very least they've finished both the front and the back of the figure. So if you did want to take her out of the Iron Maiden, she at least is finished on both sides. Still taking her out of packaging or getting her out of her prison, if you will, you really can't do anything with the figure. You're just going to ultimately have her just standing there or have her balancing standing upright. You're just going to have a, someone in her lingerie just standing there. I guess that maybe is your thing. I don't know. But... A neat looking figure, sort of imprisoned in her own sort of display 
I do really like this one quite a bit. I don't like the fact that I have to put these together every single time because it does add about 10 to 15 minutes of assembly time, which doesn't seem like it's all that much when you're looking at it, but just take my take my advice. Putting on those let those wheels are just a nightmare. I only have to do it one more time and then that's it. That is the only trick that I'm going to have to deal with for this year's Halloween. Let's hope. If you guys are interested in picking up any of these for yourself, that's another trick. Unfortunately, these are older figures, so your best bet is probably look on eBay if you're looking to pick up any of these for yourself. I would recommend them if you guys sort of like the appeal of more statues than articulated figures. McFarlane really is right up your alley. He's giving you beautiful looking figures that I think still to this day hold up well. Bethany Bled looks just as good as some of the stuff that you're getting from NECA toys. You're just really not getting as much the posability as what some of the stuff that NECA is still producing. But either way, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, eBay or online stores or flea markets or toys, um, toy conventions, I guess you could probably find her as, as well. And uh, the good thing about these figures is the prices haven't sort of skyrocketed. So you probably on average could find these figures for about a 30 to $35 price point. I wouldn't pay anything more than that, but I think they're worth picking them up if you guys want to get some really cool statues in your collection. I, again, have to say statues and not figures. Today's Spookerific review, we were continuing our looks at the Clive Barker Infernal Parade, and this was a rather impaled, but we got to the point. You see what I did there? We we're looking at Bethany Bled. I can't imagine that was her original name, but if it was her original birth name, it sort of leads itself down a, an awful, awful road. That's basically what your career is going to be, Bethany Bled. You, she probably has done that a couple of times at least. At least more than once. Bethany Bled. Bled. Yeah. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below, guys. We're just trailing off here in final looks. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. More videos will be coming your way. Of course, we're going to have a look at one more Infernal Parade figure, and that is Dr. Fetter's Family of Freaks. We're leaving the freaks till the end, even though these all, in theory, could be considered freaks. I don't think you can use freaks anymore. Freaks is a bad word. It's not, it's not politically correct. Nothing is politically correct, but at the very least, I, I don't think you can use the word freaks. That's, that's pretty bad. That's bad. You don't want to use that. Anyways, guys, certainly thanks for watching, as you always do. If you picked up this figure already, let me know down below what you think of this, and I will see you next time.